Um, welcome to this course. Uh, students who are going to follow this course may have heard a little bit about complex numbers previously. For example, if you are used to electrical engineering courses, you uh, probably have seen um, examples like this. Here we have a, a circuit of two components in parallel and the total circuit impedance is then the sum of these two impedances. So in this case it's very uh, easy to to find the total circuit impedance. If we have uh, two components in parallel is a little bit more complicated then we take the, uh, the, uh, the two impedances multiply them with each other and divide it by the sum of their impedances then we have some uh, complex number which is uh, not very suitable uh, we want the complex number to be on rectangular form like this and in order to uh, achieve this we have to multiply with a complex conjugated um, in both the denominator and the denominator. So we have to take the uh, complex uh, conjugate of the denominator that's a trick and multiply it in, in both uh, this uh, on um, above and below. Then we obtain in the de denominator just a real number. Um, and this is the trick which gives us the total impedance in rectangular form. We are not going so very much into details because we are going also going to uh, come back to this uh, afterwards. Um, here we see the, a general complex number in rectangular form. It's written like this. A is the real part and B is the imag imaginary part. And I is uh, the imaginary unit. If you take the square of this unit, we obtain minus 1. And this complex number may also be written in polar form, like this. Here we have the absolute value of the complex number and we have the exponential function in uh, i uh, multiplied with alpha. Alpha uh, is uh, an angle. You have seen this maybe many times before and uh, this uh, exponential function may be written as cosine to alpha plus uh, the imaginary unit multiplied with sine to alpha. Let's just give an example. If we have uh, the complex number 2 plus 3i, uh, the real part is 2 and the imaginary part is 3. What is, can we illustrate this complex number in the complex plane? Yes, we can. We just um, write it like this. We have two new uh, two units in uh, along the real line and three units along the imaginary line. And the complex number is then this arrow written from the or origin uh, to this point two point three. And if we like to um, see what the absolute value and this um, angle uh, alpha is uh, we just measure the length of this vector which is the absolute value and alpha the angle is just the angle from the real axis to this vector. In order to um, Yes, uh, let me also emphasize something that you maybe also know uh, from before that uh, we can add 
any multiplum uh, integer multiplum of 2 pi to this angle and get the exact same complex number. So what we see here is that this alpha value uh, may be replaced by alpha plus 2 pi multiplied with some integer value. n is 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, and so on. Uh, we also may use negative integer values of n. So let's just compute uh, uh, this uh, absolute value and the angle in this special case. We uh, we have that uh, the complex number 2 plus i multiplied with 3 is equal to the length of the vector which is using uh, the value known uh, Pythagoras formula it's equal to the square uh, root of this length, the square of this length plus the square of this length. You know this uh, formula for finding the hypotenuse, hypotenuse uh, in a triangle. So what we arrive at here in the absolute value is just the square of 4 plus uh, 9. Um, so we have then 13 here, the square root of 13. And the angle, how can we find this angle? Well, um, we know that the tan tangents of uh, the, the relation between the length, this length, uh, 3 divided to 2, uh, is equal, uh, it, it is uh, the tangents to alpha, so when we take the inverse of this value, we find uh, this uh, value, which is easy to find on a, on, on a computer, or, um, that it's um, 0 0.98279. And as we know, this alpha value is not uh, uniquely defined. It can, we can add a multiplum of 2 pi, into the multiplum of 2 pi to this value. Therefore we need some, some uh, uh, function which uniquely defines th this alpha value and it's called, called uh, the argument, the principal argument. Uh, the general value of this angle is called the argument with uh, small a, uh, if we use capital A then we have the principal argument which is defined as the angle from minus pi, uh, not including minus pi, to pi. So we can take an example of this. Um, let's write this complex number 1 plus i on the form, uh, on the polar form, where the angle now is a principal part of, of uh, the complex number set. Um, in this case, this alpha value is 45 degrees. We have um, the real part is 1 and the imaginary part is 1, so the angle here must be 45 degrees. And this is the same as uh, pi over 4. In this case, the absolute value r is equal to uh, the square root of 1 plus 1, which, which is the square root of 2. So in this case, on polar form we have that set can be written as the square root of 2 multiplied with uh, the exponential function of i uh, multiplied with pi over 4. Uh, 